Hello everyone and a warm welcome to online events and our hour together with the title The Story So Far, The Interdependent Supervisors Network with Joan Wilmot. Joan, a warm welcome back to online events. Hello. <laughs> Lovely to have you back with us and to be talking about the network and a warm welcome to the colleagues who are joining us live or if you're watching this in the library, it's great to have you with us too. Um, as, as we're kind of warming up to the conversation, Joan, could you give us a sense of where you are and the, the kind of things that you're doing just now? Is, would that be all right? Yes, uh, where I am literally. <laughs> I'm in the <laughs> middle of West London. <laughs> okay, great. Long yeah. by, off Portobello Road, uh, Notting Hill. And um, I've been a supervisor since 1972. And um, the independent supervisors network concept, I think turned up about five or six years ago and, and didn't go away. Um, and the notion of a network, a, a more horizontal way of connecting. And uh, yes, realizing, um, including me and my colleagues, that as supervisors traveled, they tended to become, to receive peer supervision and co-supervision as opposed to hierarchical supervision. And I think it was Andrew Samuels was one of the people I heard talking about it. And I thought, maybe we need a network. And mm -hmm. how, how that look and, um, yes, in, and somehow, it kept coming up and people thought it existed because it ISN, you know, as it got known, became a thing, but it wasn't actually, you know, it was virtual. And I thought, oh, well, maybe it's me who needs to initiate it. So a couple of mm. years ago, we initiated it via a conference that we, um, Robin and I put on through our CSTD network. Um, yeah, that's the first <laughs> thoughts. As Thank you, Joan. Thank you, yes. And that, I'm, I'm just thinking about being a supervisor since 1972. That's a real body of experience, Joan. That's incredible, really incredible. Wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, still thinking on that, but it's like I'm really passionate about it and I've done a lot of it. Uh, and whatever we do or whatever work we do comes from our history and our, our families. And I'm still intrigued to find out what led me there, because it's definitely my work, life, you know, my work, clearly. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so I'm still hoping for some feedback as to, well, of course, that's what she would have become. <laughs> you know, uh, her life history or family, so. Yeah. I'm very interested in work and people really finding the work they love or loving the work they do. So. And maybe, yes, a bit of history, of course, is I would have been born of uh, a mother and father where, especially during the Second World War, women could finally come out, go out to work. And when the war ended, there was no way they were going to go back. <laughs> <laughs> from being yeah. in the work uh, that's just a thought mm. yeah yes like that has also been an important part of what's in your history I guess supporting that real shift in our culture yeah yeah yeah, mm. Mm. yeah. yeah. well great to be still so curious about the work and about yourself Joan. Um, yeah, like that's, I guess that's what keeps us on fire as practitioners, that curiosity and the, the love for the job and, and keeping ourselves sharp in our work. Yeah. And, um, oh, you asked me just before we went on air, that it seems to be called two things, Independent Supervisors Network, which was taking uh, uh, the, that title came from our experience of being part of setting up the Independent Practitioners Network, 
which mm. particularly relates to the field of counseling and psychotherapy because in the early 90s the UKCP and BACP in particular wanted to regulate and accredit uh, practitioners and um, it was part of the Norwich Collective and Robin were looking at well maybe there's an alternative to that um, uh, where you didn't have to you you didn't have to join that or um, a sideways movement uh, so that was called independent practitioners network and still operates uh, so we took the title from that having been part of that uh, and then at the first conference for independent supervisors network there was a move um, to say well it's interdependence it's not either dependence or independence is interdependence and um uh, i think it's thomas Hubel or uh no um so anyway the uh no it's charles eisenstein i think began uh, along with others coined the sense that we're interbeings they've used that word so there was quite a move uh our website master who's also a friend and neighbor uh said well you've already linked the platforms already linked in so you might lose something by changing it but so we're and i didn't you know we, we didn't, haven't quite grasped the technological side of that or the connection side so it's sort of we're interesting in between the two names <laughs> but if you do the initials both start, uh, both are isn <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm waiting for some advice on that one. Okay, okay. Yes. The technological thing is a whole it's a whole thing in in of itself, isn't it? Just getting all those little bits right. Um, That's the partial explanation of that uh, yeah. uh, thing. And it sort of parallels I think supervision is a confusing word as well. Um yeah, so yeah. Uh, it's interesting that we've uh, mirroring that in some way. That's fascinating. <laughs> what are we called? <laughs> yes. So if, if colleagues want to go to the website, they should Google Ind Independent Supervisors Network. Yes, dot org. Dot yeah. org, yeah. So Independent yeah. Supervisors Network dot org. Yeah. Um, and I love it when you go to the website, you see that word interdependent. I think it's such a good description of, of where we are and how we are. So, yes. And there's, there's something about the structure of the network that- well, that Jim Holloway says, I like the fact, what, what's he written? I like the fact that ISN has two. <laughs> yes. What did you say? I can't reflect. See. Jo, I can read that out, Joan. Yeah, I like the fact that ISN has two names, reflecting our honest ambivalence about independence. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much for that. Yes, yes. Mm. Well, there's that. Well, Jim, when you say um, honest ambivalence, it makes me think about our desire to belong and, of course, have an autonomy. I'm not sure if that's what. You mean, Jim? Yes, I, I, I said that, hadn't I, when we were talking about this, mm. having this conversation, yes. Um, uh, and I have enjoyed conversations and books. Uh, um, uh, I rather like Esther Perel, who's um, wrote her first book that I read was uh, Mating in Captivity. She talks about sex and relationships and she says you know this creative tension between wanting to belong and home and wanting to be independent and adventure <laughs> and uh, and sue goss uh, the open tribe talked about the creative tension I, I like she put it as a creative tension between those two needs as human mm. beings mm. Uh, yes. Yes. so hopefully we're hoping holding that creative tension yeah. Yes. Well, and, and creating a network where supervisors can feel like um, like we have some accountability in terms of to a peer network, but also have freedom to practice and freedom to 
to be the supervisors that we are, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's a bit of a structure around like how, how that's done, I guess, within the network, but maybe, maybe we don't go straight there. There's maybe some other things to think about first, Joan, or um, I'm thinking about it like as groups kind of exchange members and those kind of things. Uh, yeah. We could talk, I think it's perhaps a bit soon to talk about the practice. I was interested in what the, uh, are people asking questions uh, at the moment or shall I just, motor, <laughs> shall we just motor on? What's, what's coming up? Uh, in the chat room. I haven't spotted any questions yet. So if any, anyone who's online with us wants to share a comment or a question, we'd love to hear it. What I did want to notice is we've got colleagues in from snowy Scotland, um, Auckland in New Zealand, Cambridge the Chil and the Chilterns and Bournemouth. Um, uh, Mo's on holiday in Bournemouth, so that's great to hear Mo. Thank you for joining us even though you're on holiday. And there's something about um, when I saw those locations, it's like wonderful to kind of be in that global connection. Yeah. And uh, like, is that also the role of the network to bring supervisors from around the world together? Or, or are, you, yes. are we kind of starting from the UK? Or Well, it was started from the UK, but it, it is like you and I started this notion, um, was it three years ago, but International Supervision Week and see what turned up. So mm. well, I won't say anything more about that now. Oh, I can see the chat room now, yes. Um, it's come up on my screen. Um, let me see if I was going to say. Oh, yes. Um, so um, we set up, uh, Steve Mepsid and I mainly set up the, uh, decided, well, what, how do we focus it? And uh, already it was, you could see the network was geographically spread. So, um, so it was up and running by last, the, a year ago and then groups signed up so so far um interesting enough our, our peer group is of six we've been meeting for about eight years now and they were quite reluctant um they were mixed and ambivalent about my idea and so we um and then we have have joined and and one of the things was um yes that we stood behind each other's work that didn't mean that we wouldn't challenge each other but we did and we're, uh, i think we're for life we're stuck with each other for life so we've signed up and there were uh, besides um the process challenges there was the technical challenges of how to fill something in online and and then there's some uh and it must have been about a year ago, someone said, well, I do peer co-supervision. Can, does that, does it have to be a group? And we decided, no, let's, let's try that. So we've got three pairs, I think now, is it three dyads? Um, um, three groups up. Uh, and we also wanted to, as, as part of the accountability, but also learning, to play with what IPN has, which that you link up with another pair to visit in some way and see how they work and get visited by a, another one. So I'm in a pair with Steve Page and Jim, who's here and possibly Glenn. Uh, we're just in the process of looking at how we meet up and what that looks like and we're going to do it online so we're actually i say it really is work in process for pro you know uh work in progress yes because we're um at the moment emailing each other to try and find a mutual date to meet on zoom <laughs> so, uh, and um i've been looking at um there's uh, somebody in the coaching world who's doing an online network for coaches and um, and there's an online su uh, coaching supervision conference I've joined because I think this is 
the way uh, to engage the um, the local and the global. This seems to be the best platform. I don't know what you think to that. But yes, yes. Well, because that I guess the idea is that. Uh, a supervision group, a peer group or a peer dyad would then register um, on the website as part of the independent supervisors, yeah. interdependent supervisors network. And I think being able to create a supervision group, a peer group that are not all located in the same area is a real rich opportunity. That's what Zoom opens up, being able to work on online groups um so i mean in theory a colleague in new zealand could be with a colleague in um america and the uk there could, there could be a supervision group that's spread around the world and registers with so the isn yeah. yes if you take our group as an example so we got together about eight years ago and our structure is three to four times a year in each other's home so uh for a whole day and then once a month on a Tuesday evening, um, uh, meeting for two hours. And we were finding that we never had a full group of six. So we're now trying out one month on Zoom and one month on uh, the, the opposite month face to face. And I think that's, yeah. And we all, um, except one, all do deliver supervision online uh, on zoom as, and skype as well as face to face so it's interesting well, that's also an interesting idea isn't it for colleagues who can meet together like geographically it would be possible but it, it could be a bit of both just to yeah. suit so we're everyone. since since the beginning of this year a, a bit of both mainly face to face hmm. but we have two people who live you know about an hour and a half away from London and the rest of us the four of us are in London for example yeah well there's also a page on it for people uh, that was a request at the at the the um, network get together uh, last July uh, to have a page where people could um, say I'm looking for a group or our group is looking for another member Hmm. Ah, yes. So maybe if someone's looking to join, they could find someone through the website. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know whether this is a gr great idea that's all in my head or whether I'm ahead of the game or whether I'm out with the fairies. <laughs> but I thought I'd just keep talking about it and see what happens. See what emerges. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I'm not talking about. But I said I'd mention this uh, book I've been uh, that one of the members of our supervision group um, uh, recommended, which is called "Radical Help" by Hilary Cotton. I don't know if anybody out there has come across her, but she's been looking at the welfare state and the NHS for some years. She has a TED talk, and she reckons you know that the beverage report and all of that was great for its time but it, it, it's <clears throat> the the shadow side of it is sort of really emerging uh, uh, and uh what did she say it's it's um it's very transactional very vertical uh like i'm the helper and you're the helped whereas uh, uh, and she's very into relationship she says you know a relationship is is what makes human beings mm -hmm. so networks and she she's looked at setting up networks of uh of self-help networks that is the horizontal and she also writes about where it's worked and where it's failed and i think uh, and she has a brilliant description which i i thought well gosh that's um that's from a from a left field an example of what a supervisor is so they set up these connectors for young people especially when you know youth services have been cut and, and everything and link them up with adults in the community and and like work they were interested in it was sort of trying to help 
young people into employment. And then she said they found that they needed uh, what they called a reflector to help the person see what they've got from the experience. And I, I've sent it to you so you can post it, but it, it, um, the reflector is not a coach. Is it okay to read it? Yes, please, Joan. Yes, please. They are not attempting to teach or guide learning. The role is more like that of a psychoanalyst who encourages their analysand to do the learning. The reflector is holding up a mirror to the young person, asking them to think about what they've done and seen and what they've learned from this process of connection. With a light touch, the reflector provides a way of internalizing learning, perhaps slowly a change in self-perception. Reflection is the ingredient that turns the activity in something more meaningful. I thought it was really interesting that they developed that. And to me, that sounds like what a, a reflective practice supervisor does and is. So I got, I, I, I like it when something comes from another field, so to speak. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause supervision can be hard to kind of catch. What is it that yeah. we're trying to do? And yeah, it's lovely to get that description from outside of the psychotherapy field. Yeah. I really like it, Joan. Yeah, yeah really yeah. like that. And uh, someone, well, as my son Joe said, well, really, supervision is therapy for work. You know, it 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 sort of, uh, and I, yes, I also see supervision as a reflective practice for work, not not only the fields of counselling and uh, psychotherapy. So in a sense if if the bodies if the psychotherapy bodies which they look as though they're thinking of doing taking over or accrediting supervisors they're going to shut it down because it's bigger than that in my mind mm. yes so that was well one i wanted to make that i think supervision is for work it's uh and uh Yes, yeah, so my, my slightly rebellious side is I don't want just one, one institution uh, trying to control or manage something that's like that, you know, and so. Yes. <laughs> I don't know yeah. whether that's my rebellious side. <laughs> okay, Joan, okay. Yes, well, I'm glad we have your rebellious side. So we have this other yeah. opportunity because I'm... I'm seeing a question from a colleague in the chat room. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what the purpose of the network is. In TA, we have a trainers and supervisors network and we meet twice a year. There seems to be a core group who attend or engage. Would there be any benefit in connecting with ISN? So, so thank you more for that question. I, I guess that's like, what is the specific purpose of the organization? And I think, you're leading us towards that and saying about how like the big professional organizations, it seems like they might be getting closer to regulating or accrediting supervision. Yeah. And the ISN might be an alternative, a more peer, like horizontal way of doing that. Yeah, because, um, uh, well, if I take uh, several people who come on our training, they're not uh, psychotherapists or counselors their managers or their police officers or the, uh, who are managing teams and offering uh, my version, process supervision, reflective practice supervision or, or what uh, Hilary Cotton is describing. So in fact, uh, to go, uh, so it's not an either or, but to join the TA supervisors network, you have to have trained as a uh, as a TA, so it, it's for TA supervisors. You're you're required to have done a TA training, and that I, I uh, so it's not neither or. You can have very specific groups, uh, hmm. but um, so it's for people who who are supervisors, but not necessarily therapists, or or say supervisors who. Uh, want to practice with uh, outside of their field as supervisors and there was just another thought I had then what was it um, uh, and, and it's also to keep the learning going uh, so 
um, uh, and, and ex exchanging that through experience. Uh, um, oh, oh, yes, and that was the point I wanted to make is that uh, noticing that a, a lot of colleagues uh, that, that I know actually are in peer groups. So it, it's to support a peer group uh, uh, as opposed to an institutional one. It's, but it's not opposed to, if you see what I mean, but it's, it, it's like, um, well, it, well, I think Andrew Samuels was the first person who read, who said all his supervision was peer supervision in peer groups. And, uh, and that was, that's what I'd been doing for years. And I thought, well, how do these how do these peer groups, could these peer groups learn from each other and, and the accountability side? Mm -hmm. um, well, and that's the bit that's held by um, the peer groups in the network would yeah. then swap participants so that then there could be a, like a, a fresh face in the group to offer some feedback and maybe some challenge to a well, peer that's group. What we're in the process of developing that's so, uh, uh, and uh, Hopefully, other people are doing that. So, uh, it's not swap. It's it's have a, create a third place of meeting, which uh, say the two the two things that IPN have developed is somebody coming from one group and visiting another group and another group. So, th okay. So, like there's A, B, and C. So. Uh, Take the B group. So B group is linked to a group where they visit, whether it's a one-off, once a year, say. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and they visit a C group uh, where they go and visit. You're not. I don't think I'm still got it across. But so I mean, I'm when I see swap, it more sounds like an exchange. But it's like no, it's somehow not. maybe it goes round the network that someone. Um, I'm I, our group. Uh, uh, so if I take uh, Steve and me, so this is a dyad, not a group, and Jim and Glenn. Yeah. Where um, Stephen, me said, so can we visit your group or can we connect with your group? Uh, we're also needing another group to say, can we connect with you, Steve? And, and Joan, but we haven't done it yet. So we're, this is, when I say the story so far, um, and um, that's what IPN do, but they say it works between some groups and not other groups. So it's, it's uh, when something is by choice rather than by law. <laughs> yes, of course. It work. So we're very at the beginning of it. I don't know whether that answers Mo's question uh, or not. <laughs> well, it would be great to hear from Mo and see, yeah. yes, <laughs> see what more Mo thinks. There was a very yeah. practical yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry, Joan. Did yes, you notice something? Uh, somebody said supervision is for all kinds of work, and then a cranial sacral therapist, Tanya, and then, uh, and then. We can learn from the uh, from Lorraine. We can learn from those bound by different laws, ethics, and practices. And that's yeah, that's what I'm really interested in. And that is happening. I mean, I I'm very blessed because I supervise and meet you know supervise uh, supervise many different different uh, professions and yeah. Uh, sorry, you saw a practical question. Yeah, but a lot, lots of learning in that diversity, Joan. Yeah, lots of learning. Um, oh, now where is it? Go so what happens once a group puts their profile on ISN? Oh, that so, the so that was a question earlier on in the chat room. What yeah. Yeah. So I think that's why I wanted this talk because we're mm. it's like we're co-creating it. So it's um, how do you how do you how how does that happen? Uh, we're at the beginning of it, so it it it's like 
what are the steps we're each trying to find out about. So we're at the, um, which is different from a body setting up, you know, so I, Robin and I run our supervision trainings and we, you know, we've designed courses and then we've put them together and you know, we have a program we roll out. So it's the network, finding how to network. Yeah, and like that's very different from that. You're not prescribing how this is going to work, Joan. It's... No, uh, I've only prescribed that the way of connecting is via the website and emails. Uh, I guess, you know, some things are put down, but it's very unstructured. Uh, mm. And that may be, that's its plus and its minus. <laughs> Yeah. If I take my two youngest sons, <laughs> the one says, I, I, I really flourished in your, your, you know, leaving us make choices. And the other one said, you didn't set down enough boundaries. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. Both are right. <laughs> Both are right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, yeah that one. thank you for that, Joan. I mean, that's a lovely way of describing the real freedom that, um, Which that's possible. And really was not good for the other, so, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. So maybe colleagues who like a much more defined structure, it's maybe a little bit early for that, could be. And But for colleagues who are really looking for that interdependence but lots of freedom it could be a really exciting place mm. um, and i think in terms of accountability it's actually in practice more challenging um because uh why would i say it's more challenging because mm. um, <sighs> it's like you have to be your own authority, but you have to be open to being uh, poked and <laughs> challenged and <laughs> responsible for your own learning. And um, so. I was just talking about this this morning in supervision, Joe, and that's amazing. Um, yeah, like I think as I'm, I feel more and more sure about my contribution but also not wanting to get into a place of fixity and, and not learning. Um, and it, that being potent, but also malleable and open is, I, I, it's not an easy thing for humans, I think, to occupy both of those places. Yeah. Usually we do one thing or the other. We're absolutely sure or we're absolutely unsure. But yeah. Oh, we jump about so you don't quite know what you're going to get from me. <laughs> Okay, okay. Well, yeah. See something that uh yes, about um the other structure that the um uh IPN use is that they have three gatherings a year where people come together face to face. Mm. And so far we've been Robin and I have been creating that and, and Joe our son and um uh and the so CSTD has uh but i and maybe there aren't enough people yet or um whatever so there is so the next gathering is in september um september the 19th at ccpe which is where we teach um yeah so that that's going to be uh an event in london um we're also going to try and run something online aren't we in the yes. international supervision yes. week yes at the end of june where we're going to hopefully have a, a group of colleagues in zoom together different from this event where we'd all be on camera and audio yeah. almost like we were in the room together and maybe do some workshops but that might also be a place where we might find a new peer group we might find some yes. people to work with. yes yeah yeah and i know um uh, Carl Gregory and um, oh, I've forgotten uh, uh, the, uh, are doing uh, a supervision. They they took over. I uh, what was it called? It was Michael Carroll's outfit. Ran it. Took over the 
supervision network and it's i think it's march the 27th and i know some people are going because they're wanting to find they're hoping they might find somebody to create a group with or uh, find a co-supervisor so um because i think i think um hierarchical supervision is very essential and that's what i had at the beginning but i think peer supervision is also essential and um and how do you does it need more container than just individual peer supervision groups operating on on their own or does it need a network so i suppose i'm still with the question is it needed and i'm uh, maybe because of how long i've been a supervisor or um and we're we're I guess in a way we're leads in the supervision field because of our, you know, the book, the supervision in the helping professions and uh, been writing about supervision and yeah, but uh, we're, we're playing with this. <laughs> I mean, yes. we're, we're yeah. this is where it was inevitable that we would be doing this and um, I'm attached to it and not. So uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm really attached, and I I don't quite know what it is, and uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't go away. So here I am with it. <laughs> Still with it. Still. Well, and I know I mean peer supervision has been an essential part of my practice. I got in a peer group almost immediately after training as a counsellor, and that's it's just been so helpful for me. And I and I've spoken to lots of colleagues who have struggled to find peers to work with. So maybe this is a way like yeah. to, for colleagues, maybe in different parts of the country, even different parts of the world to come together and find some mm. people to be in the group with. Um, so watch the online events event page for our events um, at the end of June and International Super Supervision Week. Because, mm -hmm. and, if you've got any friends in other parts of the world that you can get to come along to, you know, who knows the kind of groups that we could create together it could be mm. really interesting. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, I just saw Tricia said an online support supervision group sounds great. Please tell us more about this. Well, uh, probably it would be useful to me and Robin and the others uh, feedback on is it, it, because we are using the website and signing up to the website as a, um, as a way of drawing people or connecting people. And is that clear enough or could we, um, and Steve, Steve, who's the website uh, master, he said, are we making it accessible enough or, you mm. know, mm. so that's the main way we're doing it. And then the meeting in September or the one last we had last year. And as you say, the one we're going to do online in July. We should probably give all those dates out. Um, well, and Jim has just popped in the supervision conference in Birmingham on the 28th of March, Severn Talking yeah. Therapy. Yes, he's a website. Too, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jim. That's, That's great. Thanks. That's yeah. really helpful. And um, Lorraine asking, can an individual supervisor join ISN or do we need a diode or a triad to join? They can join that page to say yes, but we're we're using peer group or dyad as the the connecting. So yes, you can come to the gatherings. Uh, that's dependent on one of us getting it together. Uh, but it, it's peers finding ways of infecting positively each other. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. in learning from each other so uh it is a i think it is a i mean that was something that came up in the last meeting is like well you you aren't making it user friendly but it, it, it's sort of um uh it's not a body that it's it, it's it's a community <laughs> so how do you join a community it's a bit like um how do you, do, you know, you move into a new street. How do you, do, how do you connect with the street? <laughs> mm, yes, 
Yeah. It's still like that, I think. <laughs> That's a lovely analogy, actually, Joe. And how are we going to kind of work this out together? And yeah, uh, really, how do we yeah. work this out together? Yeah. yeah. Well, and um, Jim's also saying that like the website has the capacity for individuals to join yeah. and signal to other people in the community that they'd like to create a dyad or a triad or, right. or a group. So, so that's great. So maybe that's almost the way to move into the street. Yes. <laughs> to sign up on the website and um, kind yeah. of wave that flag and say, I'm, I'm up for a group. Who else is? And yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and oh, Tanya asked, how do we join ISN other than attending an event? Yes. Uh, but it's, it is like joining the street. You have to, you have to find your way of interacting so you might um i suppose you might email somebody in one of the groups or dyads or um i i don't know whether anyone's posted yet who's uh i think we're all closed groups at the moment but i'm not sure i know one or two people have um said they're interested in joining because they do need more members but they haven't got their act together to get it up on the uh the website and I, uh, I i won't name names but I, I i i don't know if i can who who should encourage them whether it's me or what, and say why <laughs> you said before christmas you were going to sign up <laughs> what's what's happened uh, well, time can just go really yeah, fast exactly. really really fast yeah. yes yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. well and tanya also asks where can we find details of the online meeting in June? Well, it's not on the website yet, but hopefully over the next few weeks, we're going to have that on the online events website and also CSTD London. Uh, um, and the ISN, yeah. And ISN website, of course, yes. Which yeah. one's that? The June? The, the, the one for International Supervision Week. International yes. yes, I think we yes. think it's going to be the last Friday of June, don't we? But we're, yes. you and I have got to... Uh, <laughs> get together quickly and get that yes and get that in the diary and decide yeah. what we're going to do so yes keep the last friday in june in your diaries that, that's yeah. uh um yeah i'm pretty sure we're going to pull it off but yeah but we yes. yeah we'll put it out straight as soon as we've had our, our conversation on it yeah yeah we need a bit of a confab just to work out what we're going to do but yeah. And I think that's, um, I think it's what's exciting about Zoom in terms of being able to run or run like me as a peer group online. And I noticed there was a comment um, from Madeline saying, I'm in a peer supervision which flows from our training two years ago. So this is further up in the chat room. New Zealand, Malaysia and California. It works by Zoom really well. Well, I mean, that's the perfect example of an international yes. group. Thank yeah. you for that. That's, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I um, wanted a personal experience of working virtually was um, when I moved to Scotland, I, uh, I was working with somebody who, uh, who was just training to be a, a psychotherapist and um, wanted to continue with me and the only way of doing it because i was only working fortnightly in london was one uh, so it was in the soon after skype must have started which i think was in the early 90s um it was a really extraordinary experience to be able to compare face to face and and skype working you know working virtually and as we got used to it we, there was one session where we did some body work on Skype and we both said that worked better than when we were doing something similar face to face. So I've had a really good learning experience of, uh, because first of all, I thought it's a, it's a substitute, but it's better than nothing. But mm. that's changed. I don't know how you found it, but it's, it's changed. I feel like it's got its own value. And as as telephone or whatever, it, it sharpens some senses, and you know you lose some, but it sharpens others, and it's very. Um, uh, so I no longer compare it as as something less than uh, I used to. 
Yeah. I don't know if Abs that's your experience. Absolutely. Like, I, I think I've been working online for about the last 13 years. Um, and it's not the same. I think that's often the conversation. Is yeah. it the same? No, it's not. It's different. But yeah. there are different advantages to working online. And of course, um, we started in our practitioner training at Temenos to have a whole weekend every year in Zoom. So I'm also very excited about the capacities for group work and mm. process work in this kind of environment. Um, so, and I think, well, as the colleague earlier was saying about her international group, mm. um, I think my experience so far with groups is that you can reach a surprising amount of depth with a group, even though you're spread around the, spread around the world. Um, and it's not the same as being like, if, if we all manage to get together in London in September, that'll be a particular experience. Yeah. Um, so it's not an either or or better or it's different yes so, absolutely uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't want just one or the other and yeah but i do have one or two where it's all yes i have all face to face a few where it's all telephone or all zoom and somewhere it's half and half so it's all yeah very individually <laughs> yes <laughs> yes well, I love that idea with your peer group that um, it's not always easy to get together, even though they're kind of within traveling distance. Yeah. So doing a bit of both. Because um, it is, I mean, it is unbelievably convenient to flip open your laptop and be in a group as fast as that. I mean, it's that really, compared to going to the train station or getting in the car, making the journey to wherever the group is. And yeah, incredibly convenient. And I would say our, our group is still mixed about it, but it, it, the jury is out as to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So okay. We, we've both said, well, that was better than when we met face to face. Oh, that was hopeless. Let's not do it. So we've been, we're going all places, but we've only been trying it out since, uh, yes, we've done our third one online. Yeah. Uh, but it's nice yeah. to have some other groups as well. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm most saying absolutely agree. I've done peer supervision and Zoom with a group of three, valuable in many ways. Yeah. 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 So I, I, to, oh, sorry, what are you going no, to No, on you go, Joan. Sorry, yeah. I was going yeah. off on a tangent. I'm developing uh, this, because uh, I, I posed some questions with you at the beginning and when we met last week, and I, I haven't got them pulled up. Uh, so... Do we need it? I think was one of it. Do you remember we generated so I was um I do, yes. Let let me just get those. Yeah. So do we need it? How do we support each other? And this what structure support us? Yeah. How do we manage the creative tension between our need to belong and our need to do our own thing? Yeah. Which we've talked a little bit about. Yeah. And how do we create community and connection when we're spread all around the country or even the world, as we're talking about? And how does technology help or hinder this? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I've got another one I didn't put on, which is a practical one, is uh, how do you fund it? And just funding it, so uh, at the moment, I'm funding mm -hmm. the website and um, you know, would it work better if you, uh, and I can, I can do that at the moment, but would it work better if, if say, you paid 25, I don't know why 25 pounds comes into, I know it does because I, I belong to another network where it's 25 pounds a year uh, to fund the website and the admin. Uh, would that be a good idea? So I, I also, um, Yes, there's a co there's a cost to it, even with yeah, you know, with the website. And I've enjoyed uh, working with uh, Steve, and how we've had to translate our worlds to each other, and have come up with this website. <laughs> and our misunderstandings have been brilliant because they've led us to connecting. So um, I'm really uh, pleased about that as an experience, whatever happens.
and yes, how to hmm. yes, whether, whether whether having a joining fee, and I would want it uh, something low like that would help or hinder it at this stage. So that's a, hmm. uh, an open question, and and also sounds important for an organisation to be able to sustain itself that there needs to be some financial investment and very generous during that something that's that you've been passionate about that you've put energy both time and money into getting it started we have funded it yes we've charged for the gatherings or the meetings at mm. the, the the annual the, the conference uh, and anything after expenses we've put into funding the website so it's mm. also come from participants yeah. yeah which is another way of funding it the website yes. the admin. Yes. Mm. yeah that makes sense yeah and another question from jim asking would you like isn to emphasize its openness to interprofessional working not just practitioners in the therapy world absolutely absolutely that's mm. yeah 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 that's so if the, quoted uh hillary cotton yes it's uh yeah uh, yeah um yeah uh i think having a place to think about your work and when i've got into conversation with um fellow travelers on on the caledonian sleeper or who asked me what i do for a living or whatever uh when i say oh it's just it's a space where somebody's as interested in your work as you are uh uh and to have time to think about it and they say oh yes oh i'd like some of that yeah <laughs> that's a wonderful description i love that joan someone who's yeah. as interested in your work as you are yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know mm. for that hour or two hours or whatever that, that's yes yeah. yeah 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 I, that's really I, Yes, that was quoting, uh, oh, what was the editor? She's died now. She was in her 90s, Diane. Uh, oh, she's a very famous e editor. Um, yes, when asked of uh, how people felt about her messing around with their precious book or anything, uh, she, uh, she, uh, it was like she was interviewed on Radio 4, and she, you know, they said, well, people don't like it. You know, it's their precious baby, and you're, you know, editing and messing around with them. And she, and she said, no, she said, no, uh, yeah, oh, they seem to like having somebody as interested in their book as, as they are. <laughs> I thought yeah. that was it. Yeah. Oh, I wish it's I could. It's just a perfect it. thing, isn't it? Yeah. Diane, uh, 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 somebody will remember it, yeah. She was, uh, she died last year. She was, uh, mm. yeah, very delightful woman so yes she got it in terms of being an editor uh, and drawing people out and helping them right get their books written well and what a lovely way to think about peer groups that we have that consistent space to go back into of peers not hierarchical supervision but peers who can really be interested in us and yeah, our work where her name will be on her. Are you heading for your library, Joan, to have a look? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, that, uh, ah, Jim uh, saying uh, Diana. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Diana Athol? Yes, Athol. Yes, Diana Athol. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's it. Jim's got it. Yeah. Jim's got it. Caroline's got it as well. Yeah. So that's great. Diana Athol. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Hmm. We've just got a few minutes left, Joan, and I wonder if there's anything that we oh, we didn't get to in our hour, um, or that we might want to make sure we say before we finish. Well, I, I think I conveyed its uh, its work in progress, and we're sort of hmm. Uh, hmm. it's co-created and uh, and it's emergent that's where it is at the moment and uh, yeah mm. that's what i wanted to convey because i was struggling with it to talk about it and try and describe it and i thought well let's have a, a bash uh 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Jim's just popping in the chat room. He'd be happy to pay a 25 annual, 25 pound annual subscription. So thank you for that feedback, Jim. That's very practical. And <laughs> yes, thank you. Well, and I, I really like the idea um, that it's an, a network to support peer groups. Yeah. And support the formation of peer groups. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I really like the thinking about it like that because um, they exist independently. And of course, that's that's a great thing, but also to have something to support that work. And to and that's what um, Hilary Cotton is saying in her book, that that the community needs to support itself, that that it's not. Yes, it, it's how to create community. And, and there's a lot being written about. How do you connect, create community? It's there, but how does it connect? Because it, it looks as though, if you look at social media, or you're, it looks as though we're more disconnected than we've ever been. But underneath, there's something else happening that's felt but not visible, and then is sort of not believed. But it is. It's yeah. It's it's uh, and. In her TED talk, she just said it's all about relationship, and that's what it's about. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, and we've got a kind of in we we long for relationship and we're frightened of it. So how, we keep moving like this. Yes, yes. Yes, that's exactly it, isn't it? Exactly. We're yeah, we all have something of that going on and there's that in and out and uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think that's like the, like adjusting the title to interdependent really catches something about that yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, and most uh, giving us some feedback there. Interesting discussion, Joan. Focus on peer group sounds new and and yeah. maybe positive. Thank you. So yeah, a real positive yeah. shift. Yeah, yeah. It was helping me to get the words to um, describe it. Yes, that, that's it. It's. It's uh, the focus is on peer groups. Yeah. Yeah. Thank mm. you. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, there's something about being in that peer group environment that maybe can sometimes feel a little less scary mm. to just be alongside others that don't have that hierarchical place in our lives. Like that, that's also a, can be really valuable in supervision, but to, be in with our peers can be so helpful. Yeah. So I think uh, pretty well done. So thank you to the uh, uh, people who've written in and uh, to help me think aloud <laughs> and join you in thinking aloud. <laughs> yes, thank you everyone for joining us live here or if you've been watching in the library. Um, or we'll also post this video on the ISN website, so you might be watching there. We hope you've enjoyed the conversation. And thank you for coming to online events, Joe, and to kind of have that conversation about what's going on and yeah. as an organisation. The website should we put the website uh, link to the website up up there? Or yes, that well, let let me just do because I can get the link. Yeah. Um, so let's do that as we're. As um, um, main needs, yep, lovely, yeah. All right, there we go. Oh, fantastic! Yes, Jim's right in I, there. Yes. I always finish <laughs> my supervision on time, so it's eight o'clock. So <laughs> let's go. Let's finish. Okay. Thank you, Joan. Thank you so much for the hour. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, John. <laughs> yeah. Till the next time we're together, we'll say bye for now. Yeah. Bye. Bye. bye.